In ballet, every gesture, every movement means something. That is how ballet tells stories. Now, Canada's biggest dance school is adapting ballet for people whose every movement can be a struggle. Once a week, people with Parkinson's meet in one of the studios at the National Ballet School to work on movement. Today, they perform in a new venue, the Atrium of Toronto Western Hospital, an event to get more people with Parkinson's dancing and to encourage doctors to prescribe a dose of dance. Here's what it sounded like when Mary Weens dropped by one of the classes. We're going to go down to the earth, and you're going to take two hands full of mud because it's a rainy day. So we're going to do a scoop with all that mud. Now we're going to spread that mud out. Dancer Sarah Robichaux sits in a chair raising hands filled with imaginary mud. mud. Her students will try to repeat her long sweeping gestures. Here we go, sitting up tall, shoulders back and down. And... (sighs) Ready to scoop. Scoop the mud. And three. And four. Now spread that mud out of the Right. So when you're picking up the mud in, in the dance, um, you're moving to the music, you're being cued by rhythm. As you Rachel repeated, Barr, former dancer, now a Parkinson's researcher. Rhythm and rehearsal, she says, two of the most important tools for any dancer, including people with Parkinson's. So um, as you repeat it, you're, you're learning to create that movement as a form of a habit, which professional dancers know when, they, when they're so familiar with the dance, even if it's a complex one, it, it feels like a habit. And, and all of that can be challenging for, for people with Parkinson's. And two. It's pretty heavy, this mud. Let's spread it out. Well, the mud experience, you're picking it up and you're using muscles as if you're weighted mud. <laughs> and then you're feeling the mud in your hand so when she's expressing that you're you're doing the movement to that feeling and it's like some of the things you're pushing stretching behind when you're twisting you can feel your whole body moving and the, the muscles loosening up bill bartlett never misses a dance class at the national ballet school he was once a professional chef at the royal york hotel he retired soon after experiencing the first symptoms of parkinson's yeah, and when the Parkinson's came along, I realized that um, my memory wasn't, I couldn't retain and, and multitask. Couldn't orchestrate like 10 tables and like, like meals that were to have it orchestrated, the planning to get it to, to come together. And I knew there was something wrong, and I, I thought, what's wrong? I'm forgetting things, and I'm really well organized, and I realized something's wrong. The National Ballet School offers free classes to people with Parkinson's part of a strategy to make classical ballet relevant to the wider community. Now, after almost four years of dance classes, Bill moves more fluidly. It, it lasts about two hours. Like when I go home, I'm, I'm buzzed with the, the energy, the, energy that's the positive energy in the room. The experience of the whole thing is, is just wonderful. exercise we're going to reach for an apple you can imagine there's two big apple trees placed right beside you and they're pretty tall they're about that big and that big okay there's a lot going on in this room just like professional dancers these students are rehearsing movement learning rhythmic cues and just like trained dancers they're using their imagination mud or apples the mind creates whatever the instructor calls for Grab it, rotate, because you've got to pull it off from that stem. And we're going to take it through the body and put it down inside a basket. You know, we're still, I think, only at the beginning of understanding exactly how all of this really works. But when you watch it, you can see that um, people that maybe weren't able to, to do something suddenly have found a new way of doing it. I've heard somebody say, you know, I... I could never reach my hand up to the top shelf to take down the dish. But when I think of it as a dance, and I grace Reaching for the apple. Yeah, exactly. Like you saw, reaching for the apple, that that cue, that even if it's an imaginary cue, is actually able to access the movement. So do we really know exactly how that works in the brain? No, not yet. But 
when you watch it, you understand that it is actually acting as a cue and al- allowing people to move in, in ways that, that maybe weren't accessible to them without the cue. And oh yeah, very nice. Again, plie down. The plies that we're doing is wonderful because we're, we're bounced, so you start with a small bounce, your muscles are very tight, and then with that small bounce you're loosening up, and then gradually with the one, two, three, or four bounces, you can feel you can go down further, and you can also stretch further up. So with the plies, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, I never, never thought I'd be doing plies, and I'm lifting a, a hand above the, uh, above the head and over like a ballerina, so it's, it's fun. And I never thought I'd be a student at the National Ballet School, <laughs> so it's, it's been an experience. I, I really, across my time as a dancer and now working with people with Parkinson's, I really see that the rehearsal piece, the practice piece, can really make a difference. I've had people in the class, the Dance with Parkinson's class, say to me, they, they might be having a rough day and they're noticing they're freezing a lot, but as soon as the music to the dance that we've been working on turns on, that they're, they just start dancing. Today's students from Dance with Parkinson's will be performing in the atrium of Toronto Western Hospital. Runs from 9 to 5. And next weekend, David Leventhal, the founder of Dance with Parkinson's, is speaking at Canada's National Ballet School.